First, let me start off by saying food and potions are pretty important in this S. Anything to buff damage, speed, or even giving more health will help in the long run in fights. I usually just made every potion I could and used them all before I summoned the boss. This helped greatly when it comes to damaging the boss, and even just surviving. This S currently has a total of 10 bosses, each being summoned in different biomes. Evil Protector, Queen Spider, Void Wizard, Swamp Guardian, Ancient Vulture, Pirate Captain, Reaper, Cryo Queen, Sage and Grit, and Fallen Wizard. Evil's Protector drops 12 demonic bars in a force of wind every kill. There's a chance to receive one of the four foci, which are trinkets that give you a damage buff with each of the four styles of attack. Evil's Protector can be summoned in any biome as long as it is currently nighttime. The boss is summoned with an item called the Mysterious Portal. If the night period ends and goes into the morning, the boss will despawn. When the boss flies down, if standing underneath you will take 50 damage. Every phase the boss gets harder and harder. The boss sends fireballs in different waves depending on how long the fight goes on for. The fireballs will be in a cone, wave, or a volley shape. The evil protector can also send out homing missiles which follow you around. As waves continue, the boss will summon portals which send little minions to attack you. You can simply kill the portals. The queen spider drops between 10 and 20 k spider glands every kill. The spider will also have a chance to drop a spider charm trinket, which when being hit poisons an attacker for 40 damage over 5 seconds, as well as dropping a spider claw, web gun, and a frost piercer. The queen spider can be summoned by destroying a spider egg within a snow biome cave. It can also be summoned by using a royal egg in the snow cave, which I chose in this video to summon multiple at one time. It is recommended to mine out or blow up a section in the cave. When moving around, the spider can move into walls, preventing you from attacking. A large open area prevents this. The spider has four main phases of attack. Two are mobile when she simply runs around, and when you hit, you take 28 damage. Or when she charges up and sprints at you. Simply dodge the spider and attack when she passes by. When the queen spider is stationary, she will summon egg sacs, which when hatch will run at you. You can choose to kill the egg sacs or continue to attack in the queen. The queen's last attack also takes place when stationary. She will start to spit venom at players and create pools of venom on the ground. The void wizard drops an empty pendant when killed the first time around. The empty pendant when used gives an extra trinket slot. The void wizard also drops void shards, recall scrolls, travel scrolls, as well as a pet called the magic stilts, which lights up areas around you. The void wizard also drops two weapons in the void staff and void missile. The Void Wizard can be found in a dungeon on an island marked with a dungeon logo. You will have to find the dungeon and traverse through until you find the entrance to the wizard's room. The wizard has four attacks. Bouncing Bolt, Missile, Wave, and Homing Bolt. Simply move around the room and dodge the abilities. When the boss enters its second phase, it will begin flying around the room and attacking you at a quicker pace. The Swamp Guardian has three drops. The Guardian Shell, which is a trinket that when used gives a shield to the player, and two weapon drops, the Razor Blade and Dredging Staff. The Swamp Guardian can be summoned using a Spike Fossil in Swamp Caves. The Guardian has two attacks that come out of its body called Boulder and Razors. Move around and try to dodge this as best as possible. The Guardian also moves around the map attacking the player. When hit by the head, you will take 46 damage, and when hit by the body, it will be 36 damage. Once again, it is best to clear out a large section in the cave you can move around and dodge efficiently. The Ancient Vulture has four drops, a Vulture Mask that is cosmetic only, and three weapons, a Vulture Talon, Vulture's Burst, and Vulture Staff. 
The ancient vulture can be summoned in the desert biome using an ancient statue. It is best to use a statue on the surface of the desert biome, allowing you to have more open space. The vulture will fly around trying to collide with you, as well as shooting feathers. During the second phase, the vulture will begin to set down eggs that will, when hatched, summon mini vultures that do the exact same thing as the big vulture. You can destroy the eggs before they hatch or kill the vultures as they come at you. The pirate captain drops one weapon, a hand cannon, as well as a pirate telescope and spare boat parts. The pirate captain will always drop a deep down ladder in between 300 to 500 coins. The pirate captain cannot be summoned. He is found in the center of the pirate village island. It is best to clear out his goonies so you can focus the fight on him. The captain has three attacks. He can melee you, shoot you with a cannon, or simply collide into you. When the fight starts, the captain will be on the ground, but after taking enough damage, he will summon a ship and fly around the map. As the fight continues, he will summon more and more pirates, as well as birds that attack you. Make sure you are well geared to take on this boss, with possibly a summon build, so you can focus your summons on the captain and deal with the goonies with your other weapons. The Reaper drops four different weapons, the Death Ripper, Reaper Scythe, Reaper's Call, and Shadow Beam. The Reaper can be summoned with the Shadow Gate in a deep down cave requiring a deep down ladder. The Reaper can do three different attacks which he does in a rotation. The first is where he disappears and reappears to charge at you. The second is where he is stationary, summoning orbs to fly at you and hit you. The third is where he flies around in a circular motion, sending a Scythe attack at you. It is best to clear an area in the cave so you have more opportunities to actually hit the Reaper. If not, he will fly into walls and you'll never do any damage to him. The best opportunity to attack is when he is summoning orbs. He is stationary and if you can find him, you can do a lot of damage. As the fight continues, his attacks will get faster and faster. The Cryo Queen has four weapon drops. The Cryo Blaster, Cryo Glaive, Cryo Quake, Cryo Spear. The Cryo Queen is summoned with an Ice Crown in a deep down snow cave. The Cryo Queen has four different attacks. She sends spikes on the ground which is shown by a visual cue, shards which she fires in a rapid succession, a wave which is a large area circular ability that charges up until fired, and volley which is multiple bolts sent at one time. Once again clear a large area in the cave because the Cryo Queen will fly around the map. Having the area cleared not only gives you more area to move around and dodge your abilities, but it also gives you more opportunities to attack the queen itself. As the fight goes on, the queen will get faster and faster moving around the map. Sage and Grit drop four different weapons. The Bow of Dualism, Dragon Lance, Dragon's Rebound, and Skeleton Staff. Sage and Grit can be summoned with the Dragon Soul at the pedestal found in the Deep Desert Caves. When summoned, the dragons will fly around in a circular motion, attacking you separately or at the same time. It is best to have relatively good armor if not the dragons can potentially do a lot of damage. The dragons one move where they work together is when they spin in a circular motion around you causing a fire beam. It is best to try and predict when this ability will come so you'll be out of the center of the circle. 
Summon builds work great at this boss, because you can send your minions to attack one dragon while you damage the other. If killed at different times, the dragon that remains alive will move around the map at an extremely fast pace, which is shown in this video. At this time after the Cryo Queen is defeated, you will have the banner stand unlocked. I recommend buying 4 and setting up all banners in the center of the room. This boss is still doable without it, however it will be much less of a headache. The Fallen Wizard at this time only has one drop, Wizard Socket. The Wizard Socket when used unlocks your 6 Trinket Unlock. When Sage and Grit are killed, they will unlock a staircase. In the staircase, much similar to the Void Wizard, will be a dungeon that you will have to work your way through until you find the Fallen Wizard's dungeon. Once again, it is recommended to have the banner stands with all of the banners in the center of the room. The Blink Scepter and Air Vessel Ancient Relics are also extremely useful in this encounter. The boss has many different attacks that he does in rotation. As his health gets lower and lower, these attacks go faster and faster. The first attack is an energy wave wall that comes from different directions. Next he will then split into fake versions of himself and walk to the corners. One of these versions is real, where he will spin in a circle with a beam coming from him. After he will send energy balls in sort of a spiral shape around him. He will then walk and summon two dragons, which you will need to kill or else they will hone in and attack you during his next attack phase. The last attack phase is a barrage of missiles in your direction. Once he has completed these attacks, he will start again from attack 1. The name of the game is to simply dodge and attack when you feel he is stationary enough. The boss is rather hard and took me around 5 attempts. Make sure to use all potions and food buffs as well. 